Mike Page from Fargo right here. Just a little retrospective on CSI's world events in Las Vegas last month. Three years ago, CSI retired the old categories of Open, Advanced, Master, etc. in favor of Fargo ratings. This impacted every division at the tournament. Scotch doubles and teams are now based upon Fargo rate caps. Singles are all segregated by Fargo ratings. Trends are important, and players are responding positively. Compared to last year, there are more five-player teams, more Scotch doubles teams, more people playing singles, and more teams and players in USA Pool League. There are a lot of divisions that, as you can see, span about 10 days, but I want to start by highlighting the two events at the very bottom of this chart. Two pro events, Diamond Las Vegas Open and the Predator World 10-Ball Championship, and as you can see, they're basically overlapping the 10 days of the amateur events. The pros and the amateurs playing next to one another, sharing the Starbucks line and the elevators, is one example of what we at Fargo Ray call vertical integration, and it's one of two keys to growing pool in our view. And what this means is connecting players at different levels of sophistication and commitment, and rating is a good proxy for that. Instead of analyzing all of these amateur divisions, let's drill down a little bit just into the eight ball singles. That's about a thousand players divvied by Fargo rating into four groups. Let's look at the gold division, which is the second group from the top. It's a good one to look at because we analyzed that one back in 2016, and here's what we found. The players in green here were those with established Fargo ratings, that is, ratings that are based upon 200 or more games. The players in blue had preliminary ratings. Those are ratings that are based upon some games, but fewer than 200 games, so we have a rating for them, but they're not very reliable. For the last group, those in yellow, we had no information at all, so they just played by a starter guess. This, is, this was sort of the vestige of the way things used to be, where players were just assigned to a group. If we fast forward from 2016 to now, what we see is that the proportion of players with established Fargo ratings, those in green, has gone way up. In the gold division this year, about five out of six players had an established Fargo rating, and one out of six did not. The Fargo rate database has been growing across the board, but use of Fargo rate LMS for league management plays an important role here. Ratings in this division range from about 530 to 615, and once again, about one in six played with an unestablished rating. And the fear is that this is the last vestige of the old problem, that monsters would slip in in that group and end up with a disproportionate share of the prize money. So here's the broad overall test. If this group of unestablished players represents one out of six players in the tournament, they ought to also represent about one out of six of the 96 players who finished in the money in the tournament. So 96 players cashed in this tournament. If everything is working right, we would expect about one in six of those 16 players to be from the unestablished group, and in fact, exactly 16 are from the unestablished group. The next level of fear is even if everything is working about right on average, still there may be a couple of ringers in this group that make their way to the high money positions. So let's look at the top 24. Statistically, we'd expect one in six, or about four players from the unestablished group to be here, and in fact, exactly four are here. So we're still good. Finally, who made the top four? Well, second place was an unestablished player, first, third, and fourth established. I mentioned vertical integration earlier. Fargo Raid's second key to growing pool is what we call horizontal integration, which is connecting players geographically. And the first step in doing that is having ratings that reliably mean the same thing wherever you are. So geography is another way we can examine the data from this July's event. Looking at that gold division once again, 37 of the entrants came from the Pacific Northwest, as shown here. We would expect statistically about 11 of those to finish in the money, and in fact 10 finished in the money. 48 players from Texas and surrounding states, 14 players expected in the cash, statistically an actual was 13. 93 players from the Southwest expect 28, actual was a few more at 33. Expect about 8 out of 27 players from these upper Midwest states to cash, and in fact, 8 cash. Expect 6 from the Southeast, got 7. Expect 5 from New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, got 5. Burger Red adds about 10,000 new games of pool each day, and so there's a constant geographic rebalancing of the ratings. The pool community that we're all part of is large, and it can be larger. More on this later, but Fargo Ray once again has identified two keys to growing pool. One is called vertical integration, connecting players at different levels of sophistication, and the other is called horizontal integration, connecting players geographically. 
a universal rating system that connects us all as the core ingredient of both vertical and horizontal integration. That we were at 3 million games three years ago and over 12 million games now doesn't tell the whole story. You can see from this plot that not only is the Fargo Ray database growing, but the rate at which it is growing is growing. And that's what people mean by exponential growth. And you don't need a crystal ball to have a sense of how big the database will be two or three years from now. We're not bashful about our approach. It is to basically get all league games played everywhere into the Fargo Rate database. And the mechanism we've created to do that is a software program called Fargo Rate LMS for League Management System. LMS handles a wide range of league formats. If your league is not using LMS right now, I recommend reading the description at fargoray.com slash LMS. Whether you're a small independent league or a major league system or anything in between, the best way to get access to LMS for your players is to sanction everybody with the BCA Pool League. It's a modest once a year charge, but it gets all your league games into Fargo Rate and ratings for all your players. And any of your league players that get eight weeks of play in between now and the end of the year are eligible for the next BCAPL USAPL World Championship event, which is March 2020 in Las Vegas. That is, the normally July event is moving to March, and so there's only an eight-month gap between events right now. Once again, Mike Page from Fargo Rate, and thanks for listening.